Hey guys, Wes Majo here from Wacom Technology with a little tip for our friends at Photo Focus. We're here at Photoshop World this week and I had a great opportunity to go out to the desert this past evening with a lovely young lady, Skylar is her name, and uh, it's this really cool ghost town out in Nelson, Nevada. And we had a couple different setups and uh, what I wanted to do was show you how I took this image from here to here with a couple of great adjustments in both Lightroom and Photoshop. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to come back over here to my original image and I'm going to point out a couple of things here that we're going to work on. You can see up in the sky for one that the left hand side of the screen uh, or of the sky looks pretty well, uh, looks pretty nice, but I want to bring out a little bit more contrast over here on the right. Equally, there is a little bit of an underexposure issue right down here at the bottom. I want to bring in a little bit more detail into this truck and some nice colors of the rust and, and the paint that's kind of fading there over the years. Finally, I want to add a little bit more uh, brightness or a little bit of a, a improved exposure on Skylar's face. And I'm going to do so globally and selectively in Lightroom. And then finally, I'm going to go over to Photoshop and we're going to do a little bit more heavy lifting. And that is to get rid of the reflection of our softbox over there in the mirror. Now, in full disclosure, it was not going to be possible the way we needed to light Skylar to get that out of there in the camera. So what I did was I kind of took a little reference shot of the window by itself. And what we're going to do in Photoshop is we're going to mask uh, or composite this window uh, over here to this window again to arrive at something that looks a little something like this. All right, so let's again go ahead and get started. So back over here to our original image, I'm going to start off by making some global adjustments. And the first thing I like to do in a situation like this is use the graduated filter. Now if you hit the M key on your keyboard, whether you're in a Mac or Windows, same thing, M is going to bring up the graduated filter. And if I tap at the top of my image and drag down, you can see I've got this little adjustment right here. Now again, what I want to do is I want to focus on this upper right hand corner of the sky. So I'm going to drag this kind of into place right over here and I'm going to move it over. And then I'm going to take my exposure slider and I'm going to slide it down. It was maintaining the previous settings that I had there, so it was already bumped up a little bit. So there we go. And I'll move this around a little bit right there. And again, I really like this neutral density filter uh, in such a way that you can angle it just like you would a, a physical uh, filter in front of your lens. All right, so that looks pretty good right there. I'm going to add another neutral density filter, this time kind of turning it around a bit. I'm going to click on the new icon over here in the panel. And I'm, this time I'm going to drag from the bottom up. And once again, I'm going to make that exposure adjustment. It defaulted to about a stop up already. So that, that was actually probably about what we needed. I'm going to drag it up a little bit more here. And I'm going to angle it. And we'll rotate it just a little bit. Again, I don't really care what's going down here in the lower right. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to hit M once again. And that's going to get rid of that. And I'm going to hit the backslash key on my keyboard. Take a look at it before and an after. Right away, that's already looking pretty good. Now I need to address the exposure on Skylar's face. So I'm going to use the adjustment brush, which is my favorite tool in Lightroom. Lightroom enables me to use the adjustment brush to basically selectively adjust exposure only in the areas that I want. So I'm going to hit Command or Control Plus a couple of times to zoom in on Skylar here. And uh, with the adjustment brush selected, and again, you're going to do so by hitting the K key on the keyboard. If I didn't already mention that, K is going to bring up that adjustment brush. My exposure slider is already up at about uh, a stop up, which is probably about right. But we can go ahead and adjust that after the fact. Now I'm going to go ahead and gently brush on only on Skylar's face to kind of open up that exposure a bit more. Now, incidentally, as I do this, I should point out as I scroll down here that I've got this little option right here checked, Auto Mask. Auto Mask is a great feature because it enables you to uh, it enables you to, to kind of isolate the painting that you're doing from isolating areas. Now I'm moving the control dot. I don't want to do that. Let's back off of that. There we go. So as I get close to the edges, because there's high contrast between her hair and obviously the background, which is the sky, and it's that bluish gray tone, I can get a really nice kind of tight selection right there. There we go. Now I'm going to hit the backslash key on the keyboard once more so we can look at it before and the after. I want you to focus on her face. There's our before. And there's our after. We really kind of brighten that up. Now the really nice thing about this is if I've gone too far, I can obviously dial back the exposure. And I'm obviously extremely going down here. But uh, again, I'm going to bring this back up. And we can really fine tune it just by simply dragging the exposure slider. So using my pressure sensitive pen with the selective uh, adjustment brush, I'm able to really finely dial in the exposure that I want and only in the areas that I want. 
All right, so now we're looking pretty good. But again, as I mentioned before, we've got this reflection of the softbox over here in the back window of this truck. To change that, uh, again, I'm going to use that reference photo that I showed you a moment ago, but we're going to have to jump over to Photoshop to do a little bit more heavy lifting. So I'm going to hit Command or Control on my keyboard, and I'm going to make sure that I have both of the images that I want to use in Photoshop selected. Now I'm going to hold down the Control key because I'm on a Mac, and I'm going to tap on the images, and that's going to allow me to edit this, these two images in Photoshop. We'll give that a second to fire up. Okay, now that we have these two images here, I'm going to hit uh, Command or Control tilde to tab back and forth between the images. And you can see where we're going to go, ultimately, and what we need to pull from. So I'm going to select the Lasso tool by hitting the L key on the keyboard, and I'm just going to drag a rough selection around the window that I want to keep. There we go, I've got that selected. Now I'm going to copy it, Command or Control C. I'm going to tab over to my other image, and I'm going to hit Command or Control V. There we go. So now we've got our window here. I'm going to hit F on the keyboard. That's going to go into full screen mode. And I'm going to zoom in just a bit. And using the Move tool, by hitting the V key on the keyboard, I'm going to move this window kind of generally in place. It's roughly the same size, but it's going to be a little bit off. I'm going to hit the 5 key on the keyboard. 5 will allow me to adjust the opacity of that layer. And that will allow me to kind of see through here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. What we need to do is we need to kind of line this, this back window up here. So I'm going to start with this upper left-hand corner, as you can see right up there. I'm going to try to line that up with the upper left-hand corner of the window that we kind of pasted in there. Now I'm going to hit Command or Control T on the keyboard. That's going to bring up my free transform tools. Now I can kind of twist this window around a little bit. Now I'm going to con um, how should I say? It? I'm going to contort it a little bit uh, by holding down the Command or Control key by tapping on. Uh, and then tapping on the top rightmost control point. By holding Command or Control when I do this, you can see I can kind of skew this a bit. And I'm just going to kind of pull it into place. And this, there's no, no exact science to this, so I'm just kind of going by eye, and I'm kind of trying to match up the size here. Now, of course, when you enlarge something, you, you tend to you know, kind of damage those pixels a little bit. I'm only enlarging this a little bit, so it's going to be forgiving enough. There we go. We kind of get that in place there. And I'm kind of using the molding as a guide. Uh, that is the, the rubber molding around the window. And let's just go ahead and kind of pull this in place over here. And I'm going to get it fairly in place. And if I, if I don't have it exact, I can go back and fix that. And we'll probably need to anyways, because it's kind of hard to see through here a little bit. And where's that window at? OK, there we go. There we go. Right about there. I'm going to go ahead and pull this top one up just a little bit more. That looks pretty good. In fact, we'll kind of drag it out just a little bit more. OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit Return or Enter on my keyboard. And I'm going to hit the zero key on the keyboard once more. Uh, and what that's going to do is that's going to return my opacity of that layer back to 100%. So now that looks, if I back out a little bit, that looks like it's probably fairly in place. But now we need to paint that in to the window that has the reflection. So I'm going to hold down my Option or Alt key. And I'm going to tap on the new layer mask icon. What this is going to do is it's going to give me a layer mask, but it's going to simultaneously fill that layer mask with black so that it conceals what we've just put on top there. And that was obviously the, the nicer uh, or the, the, the better uh, window that doesn't have the reflection. Now I'm going to hit the B key on the keyboard that's going to select my brush. And I'm going to go up here on the Options bar. Up on the Options bar, you have what I call pressure control icons or pressure control buttons. I don't know what Adobe calls them, but I call them pressure control buttons. And what this is going to enable me to do is to vary the opacity of my brush based on how hard I press my pen to the tablet. So with a slightly larger brush, I'm going to paint with white on this back window. And you can see that now the reflection is disappearing. Now you can also see outside the molding there uh, that other things are disappearing. We don't necessarily want that. This is kind of, a rough, kind of a rough draft, if you will. So I'm kind of just checking to see where that molding was at, see if we can't uh, fine tune that a bit. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now I obviously need to reverse this process a little bit to bring back her boot and a little bit outside of that molding there. So I'm going to start off by hitting the X key on the keyboard. That's going to flip over my foreground and background color. So now that I have black in the foreground, I'm going to paint back over her boot. And I'm going to do so kind of lightly as I get close to these edges. And I'm doing this by eye. And I'm going to go back and forth a couple of times. So if you can see that right above her boot right there, it looks a little messed up. That's OK. This, again, it's kind of a forward and backward process. So we're kind of roughing this in. You know, if you, if you imagine a rough draft, if you're writing something, or if you're, uh, you're an artist and you've, you've ever created thumbnails, you know, this is kind of, a, again, a rough draft, a reference, if you will. And I'm going to go around on the outside here, up on the top. And again, that molding, using that molding as a guide is kind of helping us. 
And it's going to be, again, kind of forgiving right here because it's not the focal point of our image. But uh, if we have to fine tune it, we can by going back to free transform. But uh, it looks like I did a, a halfway decent job there. Okay, right, and a little bit down there. All right, now I'm going to flip over my foreground and background color once more. And now, once again, we're going to fine tune this. Now, remember, the goal was to ultimately get rid of the uh, was to get rid of that that soft box. So I can kind of lighten up my touch of my pen to adjust the opacity a little bit as we get over here. It's not that uh, it's not that important. And there we go. Kind of paint that back in there. And now the thing one uh, one thing while I'm doing this, I'll, I'll make mention. I really love using my pen, obviously for, for obvious reasons. Uh, but uh, you know that the really cool thing about it is, is is it allows me to be more forgiving. You know, I don't have to make these really super tight selections. I simply flip over my foreground background color and I can get a really nice uh, really nice edge without having to isolate the areas that I would normally have to do if I were using a mouse. Now I've got a fairly soft edge brush and uh, again because there's a little shallow depth of field it's not that bad right here. But uh, if I needed to get a, a sharper bottom of her boot I could adjust the hardness of the brush by hitting the shift key and my left or right bracket keys. All right, but I don't think we need to there. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to hold down the option or alt key and I'm going to tap on this layer mask for a moment. And you can see we can paint directly on the mask. And it's also a great way to check and see if we've gotten a little spot like right there uh, or any of these other areas where we want to kind of tighten it up a little bit. There we go. And I'll just kind of paint right over on the top. And I'm going to zoom back out to full screen and I'll toggle that visibility on and off. Here's our before. And there's our swapped out window right there. So I think this is a much better uh, exposure. We did a couple of things here. I'll just kind of review uh, to wrap this up. We started out in Lightroom. We did some global adjustments with the graduated neutral density filter. We dragged it from the upper right down into the center to darken up the clouds. We used a new one, a new filter, uh, graduated neutral density filter to lighten up the foreground right down here. And then we use the adjustment brush to selectively bump up the, uh, the exposure right here in Skylar's face. Finally, we pulled from a reference photo that I took to paste in over this window right over here to kind of give it a little bit more, well, to obviously get rid of the softbox. Let me do one last thing because it's going gonna, it's gonna to bug me right here. I'm going to hit Command, Option, Shift, E or Control, Alt, Shift, E. That's going to take all of my visible layers, which happens to only be the background layer and that window. It's going to merge them to a separate layer. I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to screen. The reason why I'm doing this is I really like this Texaco sign uh, and I want to pull out a little bit more detail there. If I toggle the visibility, you can see how it's kind of underexposed. Well, I want to lighten it up a little bit. So once again, I'm going to add that new layer mask by holding down Option or Alt, masking it out, and I'm going to zoom way into that Texaco sign. I've got my paintbrush selected, white is in the foreground, and I'm just going to paint right over that just to kind of expose that a little bit more. I mentioned that adjusting of the hardness of the brush. That's shift, left or right bracket keys. And I'm going to get a, sh a slightly harder brush. You can see how it's got a harder edge there. And I'm just going to paint around. I'll get a slightly smaller brush here right around those edges. There we go. And now that's just going to add a little bit more emphasis on that, that old school Texaco sign, if you will. And again, we'll zoom back out. So here's our before holding down my option or alt key, clicking on the visibility icon. There's our before and there's our after on that, uh, on that window right there. Actually, this is probably a better reference. If I go back over to Lightroom, here's where we're starting from and there's where we ended up. Again, using the same process that I just showed you there. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed that tip. That was a nice little uh, kind of quick tip from a photo shoot that we had last night. Skylar was awesome to work with. If you guys have a tablet or are interested in getting a tablet for yourself, check out Wacom's website, www.wacom.com. You can learn about all of our products right there. And also check out our community website where I do a tip each week on everything from Photoshop to Lightroom to Illustrator to tablet-specific tips and techniques. Again, my name's Wes, hope you enjoyed. And we'll see you for another episode here on Photo Focus. 